After you complete either Power Play or Open Season and restore power to Nuka World, go back to the World of Refreshment and you'll find that you can now open a previously locked door. It required that the power was restored to Nuka World before you could open it. Once you open it, you immediately get attacked by two ceiling mounted turrets. This ends up being the final defenses to the Beveragier Lab where Project Cobalt was being performed. To access the lab, take an elevator in the back of the room. You can learn most of the background about this lab from John Caleb Bradburton's terminals in his private office. John Caleb Bradburton, or J.C. Bradburton, was the CEO and founder of Nuka-Cola. In his private office, you can find a lot of ingoing and outgoing mail that divulges the full story to Project Cobalt. We learned that on March 17th, 2076, a year and a few months before the bombs dropped, General Braxton from the United States military approached Brad Burton and asked him for access to Brad Burton's lead scientists for a secret project. These lead scientists were called the Beverageers. Previously, they were employed with coming up with new soda recipes for the new Coca-Cola company. General Braxton wanted them instead to work on military technology. Brad Burton said yes under the condition that he was given information about the military's Leap X program, which was a life extension and prolongation initiative. Brad Burton could see what was coming, and he wanted to find a way to outlive the nuclear apocalypse. General Braxton gave Brad Burton what he wanted, and we learn by reading the rest of his private journal entries that over the next many months, he went through surgical procedures to remove his head from his body and place it in a jar, a lot like we see in Futurama, which would allow him to live forever in a private vault beneath his office in Nuka World. Meanwhile, Brad Burton created a new lab for his Beverageers within the World of Refreshment amusement park. The Beverageers division was comprised of four scientists. Rex Meacham, the lead scientist who directed the program, Kevin Bennell, Kate Levitt, and Dr. Medford. Rex and his team are responsible for coming up with Nuka-Cola Quantum. The team came up with a custom isotope based on Strontium-90, which Rex Meacham nicknamed Quantum. Brad Burton liked the name so much that he officially went with it, calling his new beverage Nuka-Cola Quantum. If you read the secure Beverageier lab terminal inside the Beverageier lab, we can read the testing notes from Rex and his team as they create the new Quantum compound. The team has been working hard on the quantum compound. We learned that they spent three solid weeks inside the Beverageier lab working without going home. This is why we find four private bedrooms inside the lab, one for each of the scientists assigned to the team. Rex is proud of his team and of the research that they're doing, with one notable exception. Kate Levitt, the only female scientist on the team, expressed concern that the Beverageier team was working on military technology instead of soda recipes. She's been doing her work, but reluctantly. Rex has noticed this and made notes to himself inside the terminal. In fact, once they found success with the strontium-90 derivative, which they're calling quantum, Kate threatened to leave the team. She just couldn't handle the fact that this research was going to be used by the military. So to keep her from leaving the team, Rex put her in charge of the development of quantum for soda. The reason Kate is being so difficult is because she believes that they have not done enough testing on the quantum isotope before turning it into a consumable beverage. She has repeatedly talked with Rex about her concerns and even taken them to John Caleb Bradburton himself. We find an email from her inside his terminal which expresses her concern. She says that nobody knows the long-term effects that this isotope has on the human body once consumed. It's here that we learn that the Beverageier team was testing their quantum isotope on human subjects. Apparently when you drank Nuka-Cola Quantum, your urine had a chance of glowing. Kate found that to be very disturbing. We learned from the Beverageier lab terminal that many of the live human subjects that they tested on died. Rex doesn't even seem to care. He only mentions it once they got the quantum isotope to the point where they could bottle it and it was stable. Brad Burton knew about this and he also didn't care. In fact, Brad Burton congratulated his executive assistant, Peyton Huxley, for sending out, quote, 
Nuka condolences, fruit and cheese baskets to the surviving family members of the people who died due to drinking earlier versions of Nuka Cola Quantum that they agreed to test. Huxley managed to get the surviving family members to sign damage waivers before they even signed up to the program, which Brad Burton says, quote, saved us billions, I suspect. As a reward, Brad Burton buys Peyton a quantum blue Corvega, which he left parked in Peyton's driveway. You earned it, he said. All of this inhumane behavior on the part of the Beverageer team and Brad Burton himself was finally too much for Kate to bear. She threatened to quit. We find a series of holotape recordings from Rex inside the Beverageer lab. The first recording is a conversation between Kate and Rex, apparently just after learning that she would be working with the military. You wanted to talk, so talk. Don't take that tone with me, Rex. You know exactly why I'm pulling you aside. You told Brad Burton our team would work on Project Cobalt without asking the rest of us first. I don't have to consult with any of you first. I'm the lead beverage here, remember? There's a reason JC put me in charge, you know. He trusts me to make the hard decisions and make them quickly. Are you even listening to yourself, JC? What, are the two of you best buddies now? When you talk like that, I picture you in a crushed velvet jacket, swirling a snifter of brandy in one hand and a cigar in the other. What the hell happened to you, Rex? I used to look up to you, and now you want us to jump into bed with the U.S. Army. I joined this team to bring joy to the world, not to create weapons of mass destruction. You know what, Kate? I expected more out of you. I really thought you'd jump at the chance to stop fooling around making soft drink flavors and play with the big boys for a change. I'll make this simple for you. Either you stop this emotional outburst and join the rest of us in reality, or I'm pulling you off the team. Go to hell, Rex. You'll have my resignation by the end of the month. The next is a recording between Rex, the lead beverageer, and Kevin, one of the other scientists, about Kate. So, Rex, what did Dr. Levitt say? It was like we expected. She won't be joining Project Cobalt. Didn't you tell her how important this is to the country? I mean, if she hasn't noticed, we are at war. I didn't even get that far in the conversation. She still thinks all we're doing here is making soda, for God's sakes. It's a shame, too, because she's the best organic chemist we have. I guess we'll just have to rely on Dr. Medford from now on. Wait, is she leaving? She's going to walk away from all of this? She's not only walking away from her job here, she's blacklisting herself from our industry entirely. When I told JC about our chat, he blew his top, started ranting about how he took a chance on Dr. Levin and she's throwing it back in his face. The man's connected, Kevin. He makes a few phone calls and by November she may as well hang up her lab coat for good. Damn. Remind me never to get on Brad Burton's bad side. She says in the holotip that she'll submit her resignation by the end of the month, but before she can, the bombs drop. All four of them were at work in the lab when this happened. The events that happen next are a little bit confusing, but I think we can clear this up. If you look at the beverage year terminal, we find that Rex is talking about the death of someone named Ruth, but there is no scientist named Ruth. The only female scientist on the team is Kate. Ruth is not a nickname for Kate. Kate is already a short enough name anyway. Who is Ruth? In this terminal entry, Rex says, Ruth, I'm so sorry, I'll always remember you, I had to do it. It's clear that whoever Ruth is, Rex killed. The next entry tells us why. The Beverageer team has been locked in this underground lab for weeks. They don't really know what's going on topside, and the doors have been locked for weeks. They think the bombs have fallen, but they're not exactly sure. Edmund Medford, the fourth Beverageer scientist, apparently hung himself in his room, according to this terminal entry. We find a noose hanging from the ceiling in one of the rooms, with what appears to be his skeleton lying on the floor beneath it. Everyone on the Beverageer team seems to understand that the bombs have dropped and the world is different now with the exception of Rex. Rex wants to continue on the project. He wants to continue with his research for the military and he's standing in the way of anyone who disagrees. We find a third holotape 
between Rex and Kate, which reveals her fate. I don't care if Bradgerton made you the Pope. You're not telling me what to do anymore. We've been stuck down here for weeks. There's no Bradgerton anymore. There's no Nuka World anymore. No nothing anymore. Don't you get it, Rex? We're done. Humanity's done. We might be all that's left. And you want to continue working on this bullshit project? Why don't you wake up, Kate? You don't know what's going on out there. There could be Chinese soldiers right above us and we'd never know. Project Cobalt could be the thing that saves us. Saves America. We have to keep working. I wish the two of you would stop fighting. We need to keep level heads if we're going to survive. Look, Kate. Maybe Rex is right. Maybe if we concentrate on our work, it'll take our mind off of things for a while. None of us want to end up like... like Dr. Medford. Look, I don't deny it's a shame what happened to Dr. Medford. But at least he kept his mind on his work. The fact of the matter is, he lost it. He was weak. He let his emotions take over. I don't want to see the same thing happen to you. You're crazy. At first, I thought you were just driven. But I was wrong. You're absolutely crazy. Why don't you pull out some of your secret recordings you've been making of us? You know, the ones you think we don't know about? Play them back and listen to yourself over the last few weeks. Listen to how goddamn insane you sound. Well, you know what? I'm done. I'm done with you, and I'm done hiding down here, waiting until you snap. Get away from the door controls, Kate. I'm not kidding. A gun? So what are you gonna do? You gonna shoot me now? Is that what this has come to? I said this to you a few months ago, and I'll say it again. Go to hell, Rex, and goodbye. Oh my god. You... you shot her. She's... she's gone. I had to do it, Kevin. She left me no choice. Now let's take care of this mess and get back to work. Ruth must be a mistake on Bethesda's part. The only female scientist on the team is Kate. We hear Rex kill Kate live on his holotape. Since he talks about being forced to kill Ruth in his terminal, we must assume that Ruth is an old name for Kate, and Bethesda simply forgot to go back into the terminal and change it. There is no Ruth Levitt, there is only Kate Levitt. And Rex murdered her. When it became clear to Kate that the above world was forever changed, she tried to leave, and Rex shot her. We find her body on the floor of her bedroom. Apparently this three-way conversation happened in her room. This leaves only Rex and Kevin as the two remaining survivors of the Beverageer team. For the next year, the two of them remain underground in the lab working on Project Cobalt. In Rex's final terminal entry, we learn that Kevin finally rebels. He tries to escape through the reactor's emergency overflow, but Rex won't let him. Rex goes crazy. He thinks that Kevin might sell their research to the Chinese. As Kevin is escaping, Rex pulls out his pistol and shoots wildly, hitting him several times. The overflow tunnels are highly irradiated, and Rex assumes that Kevin dies. As for Rex himself, we find his final note laying on a table inside a firing range. Despite the treason and cowardice from my fellow beverageers, I have finally completed the stable weaponization of Quantum. He triggered a military notification switch, expecting extraction now that the project is complete. However, he wasn't feeling very well after entering the reactor to go after Kevin. Rex was never rescued by the US military. We find his skeleton lying on the ground right next to his final note. It turns out that Kate was right after all. The US military, as they had known it before the war, was forever gone. On the table, we find the result of this work, the Project Cobalt Schematics. This allows you to create upgrades for the Thirst Zapper, the weaponized version of the Nuka-Cola Quantum Paddle Ball, and the most impressive result, the Nuka Quantum Grenade. You find two grenades on the table. The Nuka Launcher can be found in Brad Burton's personal safe within his vault, and the Nuka Quantum Power Armor can be found within a glass case inside Star Command. This, I believe, is everything weaponized by Nuka-Cola thanks to the Beverageer team working on Project Cobalt. 
So, was Rex correct? Did he really kill Kevin? Well, if you go behind the reactor, you do find a tunnel leading out. Following it takes you to the employee tunnels, but the tunnel outlet is blocked. However, there's a hatch in the side of the tunnel. If you go through the hatch, we find a skeleton lying on the floor next to two bottles of Nuka-Cola Quantum beneath a terminal. This must be the skeleton of Kevin Bennell. Rex was right. Kevin finally succumbed to his injuries and the radiation from the reactor. The terminal in this room allows you to unlock the grate covering the outlet. This allows you to go on into the next room, which is actually the basement of the Kitty Kingdom. This pipe connects the world of refreshment to the Kitty Kingdom. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the full story of Project Cobalt and the Beverage Years. If you liked this video, please subscribe for more Fallout 4 lore and Nuka World lore. I produce a new video every single day of the week, so tune in tomorrow morning for my next video. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. Patreon subscribers gain access to my private Discord server, as well as a bunch of other cool Oxhorn perks. But more than anything, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just so glad that you're here watching this video. Thank you from the bottom of my heart, and I'll see you all tomorrow morning bright and early with a brand new video.